Tonight, Jakarta is braced for more violence as army leaders vow to defend their embattled president and clamp down on future protests. The warning comes as the British embassy here confirmed that two Britons were killed in the mayhem last week that cost more than 500 lives. As the authorities buried Indonesian victims in mass funerals today, expatriates continued to crowd into Jakarta's airport looking for a way out of the country. Demonstrations resumed in the capital today. They were peaceful and also unprecedented in what they achieved. The students laid siege to Indonesia's parliament, the place where President Suharto's hand-picked cronies rubber-stamp his every move. Suharto's most feared troops were ready for confrontation, but in the end did nothing to prevent the students' action. And with them, on buses, came professors, doctors, even former generals, all joining the call for the downfall of a dictator. After the riots, it was an attempt to turn mob rule into people power. The leading opposition figure had this message for the president. Look, Mr. Suharto, your people does not trust, do not trust you any longer. Soon the protesters seemed to get what they came for. The president's closest political friend, the leader of the parliament, was now also taking the side of the people. A message quickly relayed outside. And so the pressure on President Suharto is becoming relentless. It may not be long now before a man who's ruled this country for three decades is forced to stand down. But tonight, the head of the armed forces said the army still backed President Suharto and warned students not to take part in massive protests planned this week. So despite these scenes, the students' battle to win over the army has yet to be won. There may be more blood to be spilt before the struggle is over. Mark Austin, News at 10. Jakarta.